between April and September. Expect to see tight, close quarter racing. The Porsche Esports Supercar. Revs rise and we're all set for the feature race here in the Porsche Esports Super Cup. Away we go and it is a good start from Mitchell de Jong on pole position. Across the line they go. Straight away, Beneke getting defensive from Martin Kroenke as they head into the first chicane, or the first corner, should I say. Everyone side by side, able to just get work their way through that first corner. Now is ahead into the first chicane. A little bit of too wide action. That's 44 into Benito. Oh. Gets rear-ended. And that was Jamie Fluke into the back of him. Jeremy Bootloop involved in that one as well. Huge instant for Enzo Benito. Jeremy Bootloop's going to have a massive slowdown penalty that he's going to have to serve. But that's race over for Enzo Benito right there. We'll see how we get on for the rest of this uh, opening lap here. We've still got two wide action further down as well. Drivers trying to sort themselves out and enough a slow down penalty for somebody further down in your order and uh, drivers are just finding it really difficult on this opening lap here in this feature race as moves being made throughout your field and uh, the 28 car there trying to get in line with the 84 and that's Sebastian Dunkel Thomas Oskard is uh, there as well, Dunkel gets a slow down penalty into the hairpin, three wide there's more contact with the 66 Greg Ahutu is involved in that one and there's just all traitors, calm down everyone, you've got plenty of time in this one and well we're going three wide down the back straight away here Bobby Zelensky we've also got Mark Alexander Thieb I believe involved in that one, the Marcus Jensen, Tommy Oskard, sorry, and the other two involved in that one. They sort themselves out into the chicane for the first time here. Through there they go. And a good exit for Marcus Jensen. We've got a spinner in the background there as well, but he doesn't touch the walls. That's Ilka Harpala making that mistake as one of the uh, Red Bull cars. Oh, another car in the background as well. Contact with Yalvaz and Moritz Lohner into turn one. Yeah, so uh, plenty of instants in this opening uh, lap here, in the opening of this race here, Randy. But, uh, well, everybody's just keen to make positions, it seems. Yeah, and of course, that big opening mistake coming from the 49 of Jamie Flute going to be the talking point at the start of this race. I think he just missed his braking point, and he sort of panicked, I think, when he did that, and he locked up the rear tires. And once he did that, there wasn't really much he could do, to be honest, once you've already... Uh, messed up your corner entry that much and the car steps out on you you're always going to get in that car ahead of you uh, so an unfortunate mistake but I'll tell you right now it was a good start for the 24 of Mitchell de Jong but the 11 of Max Beneke it looks pacier at the moment and is keeping that gap very very tight as they come out of the hairpin and down the back straightaway it's a slightly better exit for Mitchell but Max is all yeah. over that 24 car we'll look at the replay then of what's happened here for Enzo Benita and it's down into the second chicane. So here you look at Fluke, it just squit the car, just seems to lose control at the back a little bit. Maybe he locked up his brakes on the uh, gear shift down the gears for Fluke there. We'll have another look at this one for Benito uh, from a different camera angle. But here we go on the brakes, Fluke just, yeah, loses the back end a little bit. And luckily for Enzo, ends up on his roof in the tire wall there but back to live action here and you can see this battle for second for, for the lead sorry should i say max beneke trying his best to hound mitchell dion in this one here Andy. and he still tucked nicely up under the rear wing but not a great for opening chicane for max did he maybe collect a slowdown or just not get the run he needed i'm not sure but it's gone from a one-tenth of a second gap a out to nearly a full tip. second and you're right so he's going to go from second probably cycling in third at best here yeah, it's Jack Cedric side by side with Beneke then. Here's a look from Graham Carroll. He's trying to take advantage of us as well. Beneke's now back up to speed here as they head under the bridge in the braking zone. Through the right hander and then the left at the third chicane. And these drivers are trying their best to, uh, to keep out of trouble, but at the same point, try to uh, gain positions here. And uh, I'll tell you what, Mitchell Dion will be laughing all the way to the bank with that one because he's now got a second and a half gap at the lead. But look at how close that is there. And that is, I believe, Rogers and Graham Carroll that we're looking at here as they go down the back straightaway here. Bit of damage on the front of Rogers' car there. 
Yeah, you're absolutely right. We also have word that the 27, second place in points, has called it a day here. Involved in one of those big incidents, I think, was the 27 car taking a peek. Oh, this actually came down as the second chicane with an incident with the Altus Esports car of, I believe it was Marin Kolak. Big incident with the Red Bull car of Patrick Holdman. And second place in points, Holdman was doing well. Comes into that, uh, going to come out of here probably outside of the top 10 in points after he's basically going to get more or less a goose egg here in the feature it race. Was, it was on lap one was that incident for uh, Holtzman and uh, so yeah so that's uh, that's uh, really been a disaster for him we'll hopefully try and bring you uh, a look at that one there but um, yeah not, not, not the best day in the office for him today and he's had a bit of a nightmare Randy uh, for this one uh, and we've seen a number of championship contenders just getting involved in instance in this race. Well, I mean, it's just the format, isn't it? Of course, we talk about Porsche Cup racing, Paul, and I know one of the reasons we have you work in the broadcast is that we always knew with these, you know, quick races and this style of car, it was going to be a bit of touring car action, and that's exactly what we've gotten today. It's looked like some classic uh, touring car coming out of the UK or Europe with the sort of pushing and shoving we've gotten around this tight Canadian circuit. Yeah, it is. As um, Well, it was Marin Sherlock who had a bit of a incident going into that corner. He's a touring car driver, yeah. if I recall correctly. So. Yeah, he was a world touring car driver. That's uh, that's absolutely right. We're uh, back to live action because Jack Cedric now is having a really good run of it here today in this uh, event. He's in third place at the moment, and the Englishman trying to make moves on second place driver, which is Martin Kronke. So it's England versus Germany at the front here. And Max Benecke, the other German, right behind putting the pressure on Cedric and that's going to be a difficult position for Jack to be in because he's going to have to attack but at the same point defend. Exactly I mean it's in some ways it's almost more difficult being in that second spot in line because when you're at the head of the line like you all you only have to focus on is your mirrors you can sort of to a certain extent not worry about what's happening out in front of you you can kind of break where you want to break turn in where you want to turn in when you're Jack Sedgwick you know that, that five car of Martin Kroenke if you get close to him you know, one, you may think about even making a move, but if you can't make a move, you may have to check up just that little bit early so you don't, you know, potentially cause an incident because, of course, drivers may have slightly different braking points depending on while wow, they're doing with the car. And, you know, there are some slight setup options oh, here on this car. What do you have? Tommy Oskard has had an incident at the, at the second chicane. And that is, I believe, with the AT car of Antoine Hijla. And that's a move from Hijla going into that second chicane. So we'll catch it here. So uh, that's the first chicane now as you run through the right-hander here. And you'll see Hijla make the move down the inside. And it's the slightest of contacts. Hijla goes round from this one. There it is, the rotation of the car. And Ostgard ends up in the wall, whereas Hijla, luckily for him, stays out the wall. Yeah, you are right about that. But, I mean, that chicane, Paul, it's, it's really surprising to me. We've seen, I think that's the third or fourth incident there now. That's, you know, someone trying to throw a move up the inside. And that's really strange to me because I, that's one of those parts of the racetrack I've never really identified as a braking zone. I know as a driver, it can feel that way. It sort of feels like you have a lot more room to work with on the left-hand side. But whenever you enter that corner and that chicane tight, it just seems like you never maintain any speed off unless you're really, really far alongside. So, really interesting to me. We've seen a lot of incidents there today already. We're only 10 minutes into this feature race. And, uh, you know, we, I don't think we've seen a single one of those moves really pan out. We've lost Marcus Jensen, uh, and it was going into turn one at the start of this lap. Oh, dear. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to get a replay of that because uh, Jensen ended up in the wall, and Ooh. he's taken a tour back to the pit lane. So Jensen is out of this one, and here's the replay, Randy, and it's um, it's a little bit of a clumsy one, I would say. I think you're right. I sort of Jensen was sort of taking a defensive line, trying to make the move on Castroleto, and he kind of tries to swoop back over the right-hand side, just as Ricardo, I think thinking he was a little bit close to the grass, kind of just pulled oh. a little bit to the left. Move. Now what? Move. Yeah, move for four, uh, for four, fifth, fourth place. I'll get it right eventually. And it's Rogers and Beneke. And Rogers is trying to make this move on Max as they go down the back straight away here. They're side by side. Rogers has just got a nose ahead for the moment here. How are they going to be under brakes? Rogers got the inside line. And that's going to be him making the move and making it stick. So Beneke 
dropping on down to fifth place now in this race or at the time being but i tell you what rogers he's trying to make some money moves here and he definitely is he he didn't have a great sprint race and you know after the invert put that car quickest in the qualifying sedgwick Sedgwick and Kronke, look at these two, this is about for second place as well, sorry Randy, but Sedgwick has made the move, and Martin Kronke, the Englishman, up into second place there, great move on the exit of turn number two, and he's managed to keep it ahead of Kronke, now Roger straight away, looking to try and make moves on his commander's table mate. So now Jack, the spirit of NX Racing, trying to open up the gap from the couple of Coanda cars and at least break up that Coanda party on the podium just a little bit. But he's got yeah, still a uh, very talented driver, Martin Kronke, that he's just shuffled to third. And of course, the charging Joshua Rogers he's going to have to deal with. And oh yeah, by the way, a recovering number 11 car of Max Beneke. So still a, a trio behind him that's going to be very fierce and very aggressive here as Rogers is going to take a peek on his teammate up into the hairpin. And I think Martin Martin maybe facilitated that pass a little bit. 92 of Rogers uh, uh, filters into third. Yeah, so there you go. Rogers up into third, as you mentioned there. Kronkela is still in, trying to use a slipstream or what little slipstream there is here today. They'll be running quite low rear wings uh, settings here in this race because, of course, you've got to have the high speed. It's quite a high speed track as this one, to be fair. Uh, just with these slow chicanes and not the best exit for uh, the number five of Kronke, and here comes Beneke then, we're on board, looking, looking, trying to make the move, down the inside then, late lunge, will he make the corner, well he made the apex, but it's compromised him for the right hander, and Graham Carroll is trying to make the most of this one as well, as the exit, that hairpin, but uh, these drivers, oh the gloves are off here, everybody's pushing hard, and Rogers has caught right up to Cedric already. Yeah, he has, and that Josh is really, really quick at the moment. Into the ch second chicane, nothing going to happen here. I think Josh knows he has the pace on Jack, and he should be patient here because I don't think there's any hope in the world of him catching that number 24 car who, oh, by the way, has opened up a 3.2 second lead into the third chicane. Let's see if the 92 thinks about a pass. Answer is going to be no. They'll go single file through this quick right left as they run towards the hairpin. Josh should set him up coming out of the hairpin and going into, I think, the final chicane is where the move should come through but Josh may get creative here and throw it at the inside nope not gonna do it let's see if he picks oh. up the run as a slight mistake from Jack and that opens the door for the Australian oh. and another mistake on exit yeah big contact there between the two of them and Josh has to get out of it and that's gonna compromise him all the way down the straight here because here comes Kronke now the question is is he gonna stay behind well they're coming up alongside each other I don't think Martin's gonna quite know he's gonna bleed out of that one and Benet case sniffing as well so it was a little error from Jack under breaking into that hairpin just cost him that line and fortunately enough for him a little bit of contact and they were able to stay in bed but here comes Beneke now trying to make the move once again on Kronke down the inside Carol oh Carol wants to be there and that's exactly what Graham was trying to do take advantage of it Carol Beneke Whoa. getting on the power a little bit of a rub there but Graham Carol makes it through here's Jamie Flute now trying to take advantage of it and behind them as well as Nils Kush so great action through this field and we're almost at the halfway point of this race there's a bit of a bumper run there from Graham but I think the move was clean I think one of the points you need to sort of develop if you're going to do this sort of racing is being able to get into the back of someone and move them and not necessarily send them I think that was on from Graham as Josh Rogers pounding Jack Sedgwick he had two wheels off on the right hand side in the grass just a moment ago and he's all over the back of the 10 car the move is going to happen but when I think this time into the hairpin and Jack's going to open up the door on the left hand side and I wouldn't be surprised to see the Coanda Sin Sport driver easily cycle into second as Jack is probably going to facilitate this pass knowing the jig is up yeah he didn't need to crowbar his way in it was uh, the door was just left ajar there for him and he's through but Sedgwick isn't giving this one up he gets the better run out the hairpin and Rogers is gonna have to go defensive here as they head on in to the final chicane here on the course but Sedgwick he realizes he's not got the line for that one so goes through and uh, well Rogers great run through that final chicane and Sedgwick Still in third place. It's been a good outing for him this weekend so far. And uh, Jack really showing his 
really sort of matured as a driver as well. And it's fine, great to see him up there challenging, but now he's got the pressure of a multiple time world champion behind him. And Martin Kronkes will look further back as well. Uh, there's action all the way through the field. But Sedgwick coming under pressure here from Martin Kronke. Yeah, he definitely has. And uh, I think that 92 car has sort of been the class of the field all day in terms of raw pace. But I don't think there's much of a pace differential between Jack Sedgwick and this train of cars behind him. So while, it, you know, it's definitely a big name to have pressuring you in the rearview mirror, I think for Sedgwick, it should be a, a little bit more stable than it was trying to hold off Josh Rogers, who is, I mean, I mean look at the gap he's already been able to open up. He's now going to try to somehow, some way, reel in his teammate of Mitchell DeYoung in these last few seconds. You see everyone still hopping the curbs in these cars. Uh, and Jack has already actually started stretching the gap a little bit over Martin and all the cars behind. As um, oh, Greg Carroll making a move to the inside of Cronke. Oh, side to side contact between the two of them. Graham did miss the apex just that little bit. And that allows Max Beneke to make the move as well. So Carroll, he's making him some moves. Up into fourth place is the Scotsman. But now Beneke and Cronke. How often have we seen those two battling with Graham Carroll in championships in the past? But uh, those three together once again through the chicane. A little bit of compromise run through there. And uh, but just behind him, Nils Kirsch is going side by side with Jamie Fluke. Because here comes Beneke now on uh, Graham Carroll in front of them as well into that first chicane can they make it work Graham Carroll keeps that position for the time being we saw Max struggle getting on the power a little bit early in this race able to keep it hooked up I will say I think I don't think that move from Graham at the hairpin was on uh, Martin really gave him a full run a full lane on the inside there when Graham made that pass and Graham basically went through that inside lane and up into the Quantas Sport car Martin really didn't pinch him at all so that 21 car may be a bit of rough housing there with the VRS Quantas Sport driver of Martin Kronke eh? but now he's got to hold off the pure racing team driver of Max Beneke. And of course, Martin's still very much a part of this battle. But of course, I think I'm worried a little bit about damage with that five car, though, Paul, because that sort of contact with Graham's car was right at the right front suspension, which is where these cars can easily get some damage, maybe bend the steering, and it could make for a stressful 13 minutes for Kronke for the rest of this race. As we look back from Graham Carroll's car now into the hairpin. Look at that that sight of Beneke getting closer and closer as they go through the apex of the hairpin out of the corner once again. All this battling has meant that Jack Sedwick has been able to pull out a 1.6 second gap over this battle for fourth place. So this is just uh, absolutely crazy. New as uh, Graham Carroll actually um, allows Beneke back through or at least Beneke had the run to get through so Carroll wasn't going to fight that one too hard and Beneke up into fourth place in the race now and Carroll charging hard but it's worth pointing out last lap Josh Rogers was half a second faster than your race leader and he's got enough time to I think reel in his teammate here he's sort of in the window if he can do that four to five tenths per lap quicker every single trip around the racetrack Josh has the pace to just about catch Mitchell. Will he be able to make a move? That, of course, remains to be seen here as we're still keeping an eye on this big train of cars. Keep it right now looking at the 92 car. And you see that the last couple laps, nearly seven tenths of a second been reeled in uh, between those top two. So Josh is the man on the mission at the moment. It'd be a wonderful drive if he could do that, Paul. Coming from ninth on the grid, the sort of advantage that Mitchell had, if Josh can reel that in, even if he doesn't win this race, if he just gets the tail of a uh, of Mitchell would probably be, you know, potentially the drive of the season thus far. That, uh, that, I tell you what, that, that is, um, it's one heck of achievement if he does manage to do that here in this race as uh, still the carry on battling throughout the field and uh, it's great to see that we've still got 29 cars in this race. Retirement so far, Gregor Hooten, Marcus Jensen, Patrick Holtzman, Marin Sherlock and Enzo Benito. We saw that spectacular one at the start of the race but uh, still battling going on throughout this field and uh, these drivers now they're in that queue and is this a case of just biding your time here we've got ten and a half minutes remaining in this race Randy are you just maybe waiting and thinking of maybe the opportunity of one more position 
Yeah, I mean, you probably will here, especially if you're in one of those spots trying to run for a little bit of cash. You're probably going to be thinking to yourself, uh, you know, maybe I can finish third to stick some money in my pocket. If you're Max Panetti, you're probably going to really try and charge to catch that number 10 car of Jack Sedgwick, especially because he's a relatively reasonable 1.7 seconds up the racetrack, not really completely out of reach, I would say. Uh, that trip around the racetrack, though, once again, Josh Rogers, half second quicker than Mitchell DeYoung, so he's maintaining this pace, is the second place runner of Josh Rogers, and still reeling in that number 24 car, and I think more than an acceptable pace to be able to catch him and hopefully make a move. It's going to be interesting to see how this one pans out, but Josh is on a mission today. Oh, he brushes the wall there. I believe that was your race leader doing that, was that? Oh, no, it was Josh Rogers. So he's pushing it to the limit. Graham Carroll, slow down penalty. And that's, look at that, it's taken him from fifth place down to tenth. And he's under pressure now. He's got a move on the inside. And two teammates get into each other. And Marty Piatella gets up half around there. Not, not the best thing you want to see uh, from... Uh, past Jurgis, he was desperate to take advantage of it and maybe went in a little bit too hot. Yeah, I think you're right, and I think that was somewhat also compounded on the car ahead. It was Alejandro Sanchez didn't quite get a good run going into the hairpin, and I think that's what caused Marty to check up just a little bit. There's also contact ahead of them between the 49 and the 33, and I think that just sort of stacked up that pack, and you know, Pat was trying to make the move, and he ends up getting into his teammate because of it. So drama there between the teammates, and I uh, wouldn't be, there's, uh, be surprised if there's a little bit of discussion between the, the uh, Kuwaita drivers after that one. Keep you up to date. Another half a second caught up by Josh Rogers on the race leader. So he's still got an opportunity of that race lead battle going to happen. Your top eight on screen then. De Jong, Rogers, Sedgwick in a really good third place there. But he is getting caught by Max Beneke in fourth. Matthew Kronke fifth with Jamie Foot right behind him in sixth. Nils Kush in seventh and Alejandro Sanchez putting it under intense pressure in eighth place. So these drivers, they're all fighting it out. They're all desperate to try and make the most of their opportunity to get as many points in this second race. Of course, the points are doubled in this second race. And oh yeah, by the way, uh, the top three, they get prize fund. $1,000 for the race winner. 400 for second place and 200 for third. So uh, Josh... He's, uh, he's, seen, he's seen dollar signs in front of him at the moment as we look at Alexander Thebe and Kevin Ellis Jr. This is 11th and 12th place. Yeah, these two very close right now. Thebe, I don't think he's going to be close enough to make a move in towards the champion's chicane, but going to be keeping up the pressure here inside of these final seven minutes. They hit the brakes and do a quick flick to the right, quick flick to the left. He does a little bit of an impression of our rally cross cars that we have on the surface, the way they, uh, the service, excuse me, the way they launch over those curves. You see in the background a couple of cars really sending it over. Uh, the way these guys really send these things over those curves. But, uh, man, this fight up front is still reeling in. Josh, six tenths quicker that trip through. That, I'm just keeping an eye on that lap on lap on lap, that fight between the top two. That 92 car is absolutely hooked up. It's hooked up. It's also got little bits of damage as well. So it's considering he's got that little bit of front end damage as well, that'll be hampering him slightly in terms of top speed. But still, this is a tremendous effort from the Australian to charge down and catch up to the American driver Mitchell De Jong as he launches it over the uh, the curbs there once again, using every single inch of the track that's available to them. Cedric, though, is coming under a little bit of pressure, a second between him and Max Beneke at the moment. You can see the gap to the leader, 6.6 .6 seconds. That's just uh, that's just crazy how those two have been able to pull out at the front there. But uh, let's we'll keep an eye on everything that's happening in this one to see what happens towards the end. Of course, we're into the final six minutes of this race here. Time is starting to run out for these drivers, so they need to start thinking about if they feel that they're quicker than the driver in front of them, they need to start making moves now, Randy. You're definitely right, but at the same time, you know, I'm always a big proponent of making sure you get to the end of these races. We've seen a couple of your championship contenders, you know, what can happen if things go wrong and how quickly things can change, you know. You, yeah, you always want to get as many points as you possibly can, but there's no point to go out there and risk something somewhat unnecessarily. Three. What do you got? 
look at that lap time from Josh Rogers compared to his teammate last lap. Eight tenths of a second, best of best of calling it. It's seven and a half tenths, okay. Quicker than his teammate on that last lap. 1.2 seconds is the gap now. This lead battle is going to be on going into the final couple of laps here, Randy. Yeah, you're, you're right about that one as Josh is going to be on him pretty much at the end of this lap, I would imagine. And that's going to give him about two to three laps to fight for this race win and the thousand dollars you have going up top a little bit tight with josh around that exit of the chicane i don't think he collected a slowdown so that was pretty much the perfect run through there so now you're gonna have the 24 car of mitchell de Jong maybe not having full pace here trying to hold off a teammate and as as pacey as josh is right now paul i wouldn't be surprised as well if mitchell maybe sort of facilitates the pass and works with him just a little bit because that's a huge margin that josh has brought back down and in in not a long period of time and of course these two being teammates i don't think they're going to risk it with one another with them both being very relevant in this championship well that gap now is under a second and josh rogers look at him launching it through the chicane he carries so much speed through that across the line again this time 35 9 compared to a 35 2 yet again the consistency from josh rogers with these lap times is incredible he's a man on form at the moment and uh, he seems to be the king of gt racing for the time being through the first chicane they go really time is running out now just under four minutes remaining in this race has Mitchell De Jong been looking after his tyres just that little bit to give him that little bit extra towards the end of the race? Well, you would have thought when he was getting within two seconds, he would have picked up the pace if that was the case. So really, I think this is Mitchell at his fastest at the moment. The fastest lap that De Jong had done in the race is a, a 35.4 compared to a 35.0 for the outright fastest lap of Josh Rogers, which, by the way, was set whilst he was working his way through the field into that second place into the hairpin now time ticking away I believe we've got about three laps it's going to be a push but now Rogers is right there with De Jong three tenths of a second between them and De Jong feels the need to try and break that tour here and this is good to see. That tells me they're going to race for it if Mitchell's going to try and break the toe like that. Breaking zone up towards the final chicane. Josh pulls out, but he immediately gets back in the line. Two laps to go here as they work the chicane. Do either of them make a mistake? No, of course not. Right up against the outside wall. And look at the run for that 92 car. Josh is going to go defensive on the inside line as they head into one for the penultimate time. Side by side for the race lead. And Josh, or excuse me. Oh, no! Oh, Mitchell is going to make a mistake, and he may have a slowdown from there and Josh is going to take the race lead. The both of them making mistakes into turn one. Both of them seem to get away with it as well but it's Rogers into the lead of the feature race of the Porsche Esports Super Cup. Fantastic drive from Josh to start where he did in ninth place to get it into the lead as we're heading towards the end of this one and there's absolutely nothing that Mitchell De Jong can do here but what a move and what a pressure was put on De Jong there as we look at the replay here it's on the brakes both of them brakes as late as they both dare De Jong getting it more wrong than Rogers and Rogers was able to get that cut back and make it work there Andy. Yeah, fantastic move there from the 92 of Josh Rogers, and I think that I think the jig's up. I don't think there's any way Mitchell's going to be able to fight back unless that 92 oh, car makes third. a mistake. Third place is under pressure now. Sedgwick cannot. He's got to try and hold on for another couple of laps. Get it slow on the exit there to make Beneke just hang back that little bit on the throttle. That's good driving from Sedgwick there to really try and work defensively. But he's under pressure now. So this is the final step of the podium. This is $200 that they're both fighting for. And look at the speed that Beneke has compared to Sedgwick. I think Sedgwick has maybe got a slightly higher uh, down for setter compared to Beneke and out the final chicane the go the white flag will be in the air for this lap and it's going to be the final lap then side by side in two turn number one Sedgwick he's got the outside line now so Beneke able to hold the inside and that's a change of position for your podium Sedgwick unable to hold on to it for the time being trying the cut back here into the first chicane that doesn't really normally a overtaking position 
And that's it. Third place for Vineke for the time being. But anything could happen on this final lap. Cronkite, Fluke and Niels Kirsch behind. They're catching up to these guys while they're battling away. So don't count this one out yet. Alejandro Sanchez down the inside. And that's on the inside of Graham Carroll. Carroll coming under pressure as well from Kevin Ellis Jr. as they come out of that second chicane heading in towards the uh, third chicane side by side between the two of them as they're running through underneath the braking zone onto that chicane and Carroll holds on for the time being but out at the front then what an absolutely masterful drive it has been from Joshua Rogers the Australian started this race in ninth place on the grid and he has worked his way through the field some opportunistic moves but also some brilliant breathtaking moves as well and as we see flying through the chicane on the final lap he can see the checkered flag here and it's going to be the first double feature race winner in the Porsche Esports Super Cup and his name is Joshua Rogers